back-to-back -back Zalgiris videos? Hello, I'm Ryan, and we are once again doing a Zalgiris-related video. Obviously, Lonnie Walker IV, he has joined the men of Kaunas there, and we're going to be talking about what he brings to the team, what we're expecting to see from him, and essentially just how he's going to fit. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And of course, we recently did another video. I don't know why I put it there. It should be somewhere up in the top. But of course, we uh, recently did another Zalgiris related video continuing our series about them and the London Lions. So if you haven't got that, the playlist will be linked somewhere as well. And yeah, let's, let's just get to it. So Lonnie ended up in Kaunas and it did seem, in fairness, from the last week and a bit of change of discussion that that was where he was gonna go. What's surprising is that it so quickly became that and that it was that in the end. Uh, for those of you who don't recall, uh, Real Madrid uh, had space to bring someone in and Lonnie obviously fit that bill. But also Barcelona suddenly had an opening due to the unfortunate injury to Nicola Laprovitola. And in both cases, you're thinking, well, maybe Lonnie Walker is the guy they're looking at. Barcelona never really entered the picture, mainly because... Their need is ball handling, and like Lonnie's there to score. We're going to talk about that more with his role with Zalgiris. He's not there to be the creator. That's fine. That wasn't the, the focus for Barcelona, and they're still obviously working out what they're going to do. Real Madrid, they did need shooting. Uh, it was an area they were short on. Uh, is an area they're still short on. And uh, they obviously, whatever way it was going, either didn't feel he was the right move, or more importantly, Lonnie Walker didn't feel Real Madrid was the right move, which is <laughs> saying something, because saying Real Madrid isn't the right move, it takes a lot. Uh, not just because of obviously the financial compensation, but because of just how much players seem to find the lifestyle of being a baller in Madrid. Like uh, you compare it to Conus, you compare it to Madrid. Like in Conus, you are going to be, you know, the dude around town, <laughs> you know, and hey, some guys like that. Even at 25, Lonnie Walker might still like that. But in Re in Madrid, you can live that really, really, really good life and decide how, you know, publicly facing you are as a person, which I don't know about you, but to me, that's very appealing. Even 25-year-old me would have loved that. So, yeah, uh, he didn't go for that and Real didn't go for him. And it very, very quickly became clear that Zalgirish was the place. So that leads to the obvious question of, What's he going to do? So the first thing, it's very clear, is a switch for Wallace, who's obviously left the side. That's fine. Um, that's what's happened. But uh, again, as I hinted at in the first thing, he is not there to ball hand. Like, Francisco's going to be the man controlling that ball. Like, Walker, uh, I would call him a short shooting guard. Some might call him a very short, small forward. Uh, you know, he's, he's going to be the two. And uh, what I like about him, though, is that he's a two who can fit into three-guard lineups. Really, really nice in that respect. He's not too bad on volume. Like, his percentage of shooting in the NBA were actually held up pretty well. It was his usage early in his last season in particular that fell off a cliff, which sort of made a European offer become something he'd consider. And so I look at this and I go, well, you know, Zalgiris, uh, you know, are in a position here where they can offer him what he wants because obviously the biggest thing with a player like Lonnie Walker for, Lonnie Walker for, Lonnie Walker the fourth, uh, Lonnie wants to get back into the NBA. It's very clear Lonnie Walker wants to be an NBA baller. And listen, that's his priority. you got to factor that in when you're working around it. That's another reason I think maybe the Real thing wasn't working because they didn't want the NBA, they may not have wanted the NBA out until the end of the season, whereas Lonnie Walker wanted to keep it in play pretty much live until uh, the trade deadline, it looks like, based on the deal he has at Zalgiris. Like once we hit that mid-February point, if he's still at Zalgiris, we know he's going to be there till the year end. And, I think that's a gamble Zalgiris are willing to make because you look essentially at why uh, they're bringing him in. It's that clear direct swap. Great. He's there as a shooter, as a scorer. He's adding to what they already have. They clearly have a very well-drilled defensive unit there. Good creativity. We mentioned Francisco. Shooting is okay, but clearly could be better. And that's an area they're trying to build on, trying to improve. Lonnie Walker's an immediate upgrade, you would think, in that respect. So they fit, solve a lot of problems. And they're more capable of, in their position, gambling than Real Madrid are because Real want, are in a situation where they feel they need that person and to be able to lock them down through the season's end. Whereas Zalgiris felt would have felt, well, we kind of are okay without him. We could be better with him, but we're still happy with where we are without him. So if we are to lose him, we 
we're still going to be okay. Like we're still not going to be in that spot where we're worried about what we do next. And I think that's an area Zalgiris are, you know, focused on as a case of if Walker doesn't stay, and my money would be the way that he does stay to year end, season end, sorry. But if Walker doesn't stay to the season's end, Zalgiris, I think, feel more confident in their ability to adapt for the time without someone in that slot and to potentially find someone, probably not a Lonnie Walker level, in fact, I'll go so far as to say definitely not a Lonnie Walker level, at least what we think Lonnie Walker is, just to be clear, Uh, because obviously he might end up flopping. But I mean what we think Lonnie Walker is, not what he may turn out to be. Um, They are unlikely to find someone at that level, uh, you know, again. But, uh, you know, it's a case of gamble now. It's a very low-risk gamble, potential for very high reward. Like, Zalgiris were in a better spot to give Walker what he wanted. And uh, they, you know, obviously we, we know that Trinchieri has chatted with him via Zoom, was very impressed by him as a young man. And it's a very, very good fit as a result for both sides. Like, you look at this and you go, yeah, you know, Lonnie's getting the most important things he wants out of this. And we know he's going to get some serious court time. Zalgiris are getting basically a low risk, potential very high reward. That's that's a good marriage. Whereas Real, there's certain things they wanted that they didn't want to give Lonnie, and they kind of were right not to. And, you know, different situation. And that's why it became clear extremely fast in this process that uh, Zalgiris were going to win the battle for the signature. So what's this going to mean for Zalgiris through season end? Let's not expect Kendrick Nunn, but the comparisons are going to be obviously made uh, because he's a player of a similar age to Nunn as Nunn came over, similar level of experience, similar shooting stats, uh, a whole lot of uh, similar role, basically a whole lot of similarities in terms of when they're coming over, how they're coming over, and uh, you know what they're offering as a change-up essentially to their team. Assuming someone has a Kendrick Nunn level impact is... Uh, well, good for you if you're willing to do that, is all I'm saying. I'm not going to assume someone's going to have a Kendrick Nunn level impact because Kendrick Nunn was a game changer when he hit the season, scene last season. Like, you know, and he, like, you know, he grew into the role more and more as the season went on. Like, you know, so no. Uh, but I do think Lonnie Walker could grow into his role more and more as the season goes on, which is why I think it's very promising for Zalgirish to build off this good start. Like, the most, the two things we associate most with Zalgirish is. The great crowd at the home games and the late season charge. Uh, at least in the modern EuroLeague era, just to be clear, in terms of like their final third of a season. It's like, you know, you're a team who's like battling for a playoff spot. And uh, you're looking at your last nine, ten games saying, you go, oh man, I got Zalgirish on the road in the last ten games. Uh, because, you know, y'all, y'all, or even Zalgirish at home in the last ten games, y'all just have that final, you know, stretch charge every season. Uh, and, uh, that's just stands to you. But of course, you've had a very, very good start, Zalgiris. Uh, better than usual, I think it's safe to say. Uh, I think that's probably the least controversial thing I've said in a very uncontroversial video. So you're yeah, bringing him in, and like your only concern is, has he gone up to the chemistry quickly? I think they're going to stagger it. I don't think Trinchieri is going to take any risks that he doesn't need to take. He can measure how and when he deploys Lonnie Walker. He can measure what he's going to do with him, how he's going to implement into the offense. He's going to work out what impact having Lonnie has on the defense, like what, where you know there might be new opportunities created, new holes to defend. Uh, you know, it's Trinchieri. Like he's going to work this out. Uh, so yeah, it's, I think this puts Zalgiris from being a team which is fighting for the play-ins, it still is, just to be clear, even though it's doing so well, to one that is, well, probably fighting for the play-ins, a realistic chance of fighting for a straight playoff spot. Like, a top six is not unthinkable when you're adding this and you've got that hot start. So long as the final stretch charge happens still, like, everything is dependent on the one thing we expect to happen, which is the final stretch charge from Salgarish. But yeah, I think, you know, he offers a lot of upside. Like, I don't think it'll be a Kendrick Nunn level impact. I don't think it needs to be a Kendrick Nunn level impact. I just need, I think the primary thing is if the net positive is an improvement overall in the shooting from Zalgirish, that's a big bonus. Because if Lonnie Walker can improve your overall shooting, you've already got a lot of great things in place that, like, you know, should work well. And, uh, you know, then we're talking like, you know, well, like, you know, shoot for the stars, basically. Like, you know, you've got the pieces you want. You've got them doing what you want. You've added this piece. You'll work out how to use it, how to figure it out, and what you need to change with the other pieces you've already got. And yeah, I just think it's a it's extremely low risk uh, with potentially very high reward. Um, so I like the move. I like the signing. I think that for Zalgirish, uh, it's uh, going to work out one way or the other in a good way. 
like either he will be great, uh, I say either because there's really only three things, he could be great, amazing, phenomenal, and be a game changer for you. The most likely outcome is he's a good upgrade, uh, brings a bit more, uh, things go well, and worst case scenario, things become obvious very fast that he's not working out and or he just departs because he gets an MBA job and you're back where you already are, which is not that bad a spot to begin with. I don't think there's a real potential for a net negative here is what I'm trying to say. It's a very mild gamble and uh, I think it's going to work out. So I'm actually recording all three of the videos for this week in one day. So this is the Monday video you're watching now. There are Wednesday and there are Friday videos. I'll be changing my clothes to be mysterious. But there is a reason I'm recording them all in one day, and that is because I am off to Athens, the Greek derby. So uh, that's going to be wild, obviously. It's going to be great. But uh, we'll be beginning a project there. <laughs> so there will be two full-length videos coming from the Athens trip. One will be of the normal full-length variety like this. The other one is part of a much bigger project for the new year, which will also be its own video, just to be clear, uh, which we're really looking forward to telling you all about as we get towards the new year. Um, but um, yeah, it's uh, going to be fascinating. It's going to be fun. And I am extremely excited about what we're doing. But obviously, Greek Derby on Friday, I'll be at that. But we will be dropping videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And uh, listen, thank you for joining us. It really is a pleasure. But if you're wondering why, hey, there's not very much EuroLeague content on the YouTube this week. That's why. It's because I'm traveling for EuroLeague. Okie dokie. Listen, folks, as always, it's a pleasure. And until Wednesday, I will see you soon.